Welcome to the mathematics class of Mr. Larry Whittington. Stay tuned as Mr. Whit get on here today and speak to us about fractions. I hope you figure to understand what he gonna teach. Get your ink pen and your pencil out your calculator and get ready to learn something from Mr. Whittington Fort Bend Tutoring. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring. And today we're going to be talking about dividing fractions. That's right, so let's check out what we have here. In problem number one we have 4 fifths divided by 6 7. So your first step is to rewrite the problem as a multiplication problem. That's right, and you can do so by multiplying by the reciprocal, the flip of the second fraction. So this will be 4 fifths times 7 6, like so. And if you've watched our multiplying fractions video, you'll know that I have a preference for simplifying before I multiply, so that's exactly what I'm going to attempt to do. I'm looking for any of the numbers in the numerator to have something in common with one of the numbers in the denominator, a common factor that I can divide by. And lo and behold, 4 and 6 can both be reduced by 2. Mm -hmm. They can both be divided by 2. So 2 goes into 4 twice, 2 goes into 6 three times, and then I'll multiply straight across. So let's do just that. I have 2 times 7 gives me 14, and 5 times 3 is 15, and that's the answer. That's it. Mm -hmm. Boxing up my answer. Done and done, ladies and gentlemen. That's problem number one. So remember, when you're dividing two fractions, always multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction. That's right. Flip that second fraction, change division sign into a multiplication sign, and then multiply your fractions. Yeah. So that's what you're going to do. Let's look at some more problems. Mm -hmm. Moving on to problem number two. I have 15 sixteenths divided by 9 tenths. So once again, I want to start the problem off by rewriting it as a multiplication problem. So this will be rewritten as 15 sixteenths times 10 ninths, like so. From here, I'm looking to simplify before I multiply. And I notice that 15 and 9 can both be reduced by 3. So 3 goes into 9 3 times, 3 goes into 15 5 times. I'm noticing that 10 and 16 can both be reduced by 2. They're both even, right? So 2 goes into 10 5 times, and 2 goes into 16 8 times. From here, ladies and gentlemen, none of the remaining numbers in the numerator can be reduced with any of the numbers in the denominators. So that means it's time to multiply straight across. So 5 times 5 is 25, and 8 times 3 is always 24. And this is our answer right here, ladies and gentlemen. You can leave your answer like this, or if you wanted to write it as a mixed number, 24 goes into 25 one time, leaving 1 over. So that's 1 and 1 24ths. All right, so depending on what level of class you're in, 25 24 is the answer, or you can give your answer as a mixed number, and it'll be 1 and 1 24 done and done. All right, good problem. That was problem number two. All right, number three, notice that we actually don't have two fractions here. Mm -mm. We have a whole number divided by a fraction. But first, what we will do is change this into two fractions dividing. How do we do that? Well, I'm going to place the 15, that whole number, over 1. Yep. So now I have two fractions dividing now. Yep. Anytime you have a whole number, an integer, you can always place it over 1 to change it into fraction notation. From there, I'll be dividing these two fractions by multiplying by the reciprocal of the second fraction. So rewriting this, I have 15 over 1 times 9 fifths, just like that. From here, I'll be simplifying this by looking for a number in the numerator that has something in common with any of the numbers in the denominator. And I notice that 15 and 5, they can both be divided by 5. So 5 goes into 15 three times. 5 goes into itself once. And then I multiply straight across. So 3 times 9 is 27. 1 times 1 is 1. And any number over 1, ladies and gentlemen, is itself. So this answer is just 27. That's it. All right. Trying to get that red box going for you. There you go. Problem number three. The answer is 27. Okay. Let's move on to the next problem here. Problem number four. I have 24 35ths divided by 3 7 That's right. Two fractions ready to go at it. And now I'll be rewriting these fractions and this expression as a multiplication problem. 
That's right. By multiplying by the reciprocal, the flip of the second fraction. So I now have it rewritten as 24 35ths times 7 thirds. Now, all I have to do now is attempt to simplify this before I multiply. So I do notice that 7 and 35 can both be reduced by 7. So 7 goes into itself once. 7 goes into 35 five times. 3 goes into itself once. And 3 goes into 24 eight times. From there, I'll be multiplying straight across. That's right. Multiply straight across. So 8 times 1 is 8. 5 times 1 is 5. And this could be your answer as an improper fraction. Or if you want to write this as a mixed number, you'll say 5 goes into 8 one time. And that leaves you with 3. So you'll end up with 1 and 3 fifths as a result. So either one of these answers, once again, depending on your level of mathematics class, can be accepted. You got it. Here you have 8 fifths, the improper fraction. And the 1 and 3 fifths is your mixed number. Both are correct. They're the same value. So that's problem number four, ladies and gentlemen. And now we're, we're just moving on to the next problem. So in problem number five, I have 26 27ths divided by 13. Uh-huh. So once again, I have that whole number present. And I want to change that into a fraction. So I'm rewriting this as 26 27ths divided by 13 over 1. Remember, every integer, every whole number can be placed over 1 to change it into a fraction. From here, we'll be multiplying by the reciprocal of the second fraction. So this means I'll be rewriting this as 26 27 times 1 13 just like so. Now, in attempt to simplify this before I multiply, I do notice that 13 and 26 can both be divided by 13. So 13 goes into itself once, it'll go into 26 twice, and then I'll multiply straight across because I can't reduce anything else. So 2 times 1, that gives me 2, and 27 times 1 is 27, and that's my answer. Done, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. It's problem number 5. 2 27 is the result. That's it. Okay, let's keep it moving. In problem number six, I have 14 39 divided by 12 13 divided by 7 ninths. Now, in this problem, ladies and gentlemen, notice that I do have three fractions. However, using your order of operations, that's right, the order of operations, we're always going to be moving from left to right. And when we're dividing two fractions, we always multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction. So I'm going to rewrite this as 14 39 times 13 twelfths. And for now, I'll just bring down this divided by 7 ninths. Just bring that down, all right? Then I'll focus on simplifying before I multiply these first two fractions here. I do notice that 13 and 39 can both be reduced by 13. So 13 goes into itself once. It'll go into 39 three times. 14 and 12, they can both be reduced by 2. So 2 goes into 12 6 times. 2 goes into 14 7 times. So in multiplying these two fractions straight across, I have 7 times 1, which is 7, and then 3 times 6, which is 18. And then I'll continue to bring down that divided by 7 ninths. All right. So now we found out the result of dividing the first two fractions together, which is 7 eighteenths. And then I brought down that third, that final fraction, that divided by 7 ninths. Remember that in order to divide these two fractions, we'll need to multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction. So I'll still need to rewrite this as 7 eighteenths times 9 sevenths. And this is what I have thus far. I can then see if I can simplify before I multiply. Well, I can. I do notice that the sevens here, the one that's in the numerator and the denominator there, can be reduced. So seven goes into itself once, seven goes into itself once. Also, nine and 18 can be reduced by nine. Remember, you're always looking for that largest factor that they have in common. So nine can go into itself once, and nine goes into 18 twice, and then we'll multiply straight across. That's right, let me get my arrows popping for you. So you can see, there you go. So one times one gives you one, and two times one is two, and that's your answer. That's it, one half, done. So we started out with three fractions in that problem, ladies and gentlemen, and we just focused on dividing the first two fractions. We took that result and divided by the last, and we ended up with a result of one half. I put it in a red box, and we were done. Well, this is Dividing Fractions with Mr. Witt and Fort Bend Tutoring. As always, please rate, comment, and subscribe, and if you're able, please donate. We really appreciate that. Check out our Facebook page, Fort Bend Tutoring, and please like it. All right, take care. Peace.
Oh Lord, there's so many kind of fractions. They got proper, improper, addings, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, mixed numbers, LCD. Oh, that's like my TV. Simplifying, and my favorite of all, your least common denominator. <laughs> <laughs>